Well, hello. Let's um, work on loading some fonts through this new software we have called Font Agent. And uh, for my typography and graphic design students and electronic layout students, uh, we would most likely be finding our fonts in our course. So either uh, in your typography course on Blackboard or your electronic layout course. And those fonts, before we you know, can load them, we need to get them. So we're going to click on that course and we're going to go to resources. And inside the resources folder, you should see uh, if you scroll down, sometimes it's near the bottom, a thing that says fonts for educational use only. Just keep in mind that these are licensed to the college. They are not licensed to you to use for a profit or other distribution. So make sure you just use these for uh, class projects. I'm going to open that for folder. And I will have a new video posted here um, on how to load fonts, uh, which I'm creating right now. So here is a zipped folder that has all of our fonts and I can right click on that and I can save it to a specific location and I'm going to choose the desktop. You can also click on this triangle and see the desktop this way. And this is a zip archive. So we have just opened or excuse me, downloaded a zip archive. While the zip archive is downloading, I am going to open font agent and Again, while it's loading, I am going to do a couple things here. Now, ignore these. These are uh, from earlier practice today. Basically, I have a system fonts folder um, available, which are preloaded fonts, but I want to load my own fonts, and I also want to organize them into sets. Now, there is a My Sets area, but I have no sets created yet. Now, I'm going to create three sets. Now, you could create uh, more sets if you'd like, but I'm going to create three. So to create a set, I am going to go to Tools, and I am going to choose new set. And for the set name, I'm going to call it display fonts because I have a folder in our fonts folder called display fonts. I'm also going to create, going to create another set by going to tools and I'm going to have one that's sans serif and also one that is serif. So I go to tools, new set, I'm going to name this one serif fonts because that's how we have them kind of separated in our fonts folder that we provided. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the desktop for just a moment. Um, now, I know when I was playing with Font Agent uh, last week, it looked a little different, and it also asked me where did I want my Font Agent Pros uh, fonts to be located. Uh, if you get a window like that, uh, read through it and, locate, and, and, and put those fonts uh, on the desktop. That would be the best thing. Um, I'm going to double click on this fonts organized by name zip file that I downloaded from my Blackboard resources area and it will expand into a folder. I can then delete the zip file. We can see here that when I open this folder we do have um, in that fonts organized by name we have three folders. We have a display fonts, a sans serif, and a serif fonts folder. Now what we're going to do Unfortunately, I have not figured out how to import the font directly into the set. Even though I have the set selected and I can right click, I will hit import, select import fonts. And I will go find my desktop. Um, now, here's the deal. Sometimes if we click on this, if we double click on it, it will not open it. It will go to and install all of those fonts. So single click this item and then hit open. And oh, here we go. Let's cancel that. What it's doing is, I haven't figured this one out either, I'm new to a new user to this, but it's trying to load all of those fonts in at one time. Um, it puts what time we were loading them, uh, assuming it did load them. So I'm going to try to import that again, and let's see if we can do this in a different way. There we go. We'll view by uh, list, that way we can be selective about which fonts we load instead of loading them all at one time, because we want to organize these. So since I'm playing with a dis or since I'm wanting to put these in a display fonts set, I'm clicking on display fonts and I'm going to hit open and it will start importing these fonts. Now it might give uh, us a little report about if there were errors or if we have duplicate fonts. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Now the the thing that I'm learning is that even though I had display fonts selected up here, the set it didn't put them in here. So to put those in there, I will. I will uh, go to the recent, uh, the import history, which is the most recent import. And I'm going to click on the first font and I'm going to hit Command A. Uh, I'm on a Mac, by the way, so Command A is select all. And I'm going to move those display font or those fonts to the display fonts set. 
Now you'll see there's a number that comes up next to it that wasn't there. There's 372 fonts. So I just put my display fonts into the display font set. The next set I'm going to be working on is sans serif. So I'm going to right click and import and I'm going to choose the sans serif fonts folder and open it. Now again, I don't know why it doesn't put it in that set, um, but uh, I will show you here in a minute. It puts it down here in the import history. Uh, this gives us the report, so I'm going to hit OK. No big major problems there. And this most recent import history set, I'm going to select the first font, hit Command A again, which is select all. And I'm going to drag that to the sans serif fonts set. Now, the last one will be the serif fonts that we have. So I'm going to right click, tell it to import the fonts, and then choose serif fonts. Again, this will show an import history when those come in. This is the set of fonts where we have the most font files, 991 to be exact. I'm going to click on the first font in the serifs. I'm going to hit Command A to select all of that import and move it to serif fonts. Okay. So now I have fonts loaded um, and hopefully they'll stay loaded when I restart the machine. Hopefully with our uh, system, the way we have it set up, it will remember that they're, that's how I wanted it. Um, so these fonts are loaded, but they're not activated yet. So if I were to open InDesign or Photoshop or Illustrator, any software really, uh, Word, none of these fonts that I have uh, loaded are active. Okay, so I'm opening InDesign and while that's doing that in the background, I'm going to speak to some of the features of Font Agent, keeping in mind that I have limited use on this so far. So let's say we were curious about what one of these sans serif, or excuse me, what these serif fonts look like. So I'm in the serif fonts set, and I wanted to see what um, Adobe Jensen Pro Bold uh, looks like. So when I click on the name of that font, you will see that there is a sample of text that uh, it puts here. And I'm going to click and move some things around here so we can see a little bit more. And it puts the alphabet and also it puts a statement in there just to show what it looks like in sentence structure. The cool thing about this um, font agent software is that you can kind of see whether or not this uh, typeface will look good set in a paragraph and look for the readability. Now it is Laura Mipson, but uh, it does kind of, it really gives you an idea of how well this might read in body copy. And that's really important because many fonts don't work well in body copy. So this one would work well even though it's bold. We don't typically bold body copy. Uh, but it, it is fairly readable. Um, I might do Caslon Pro and that works out much better. Now these are not loaded. I'm just looking to see what they look like. Uh, you also have, you can see the glyphs that um, are present and I'm going to increase the size of those. Glyphs are special characters, um, you know, such as fractions and that kind of thing. So you can kind of shop around and see what kind of glyphs each typeface has without having to load them and then look at the glyphs. So there's all sorts of special little glyphs in here. Uh, again, you may want to increase the size of them so you can see them better. Um, but yeah, you can basically shop for what font you want, not load it so it doesn't bog the computer down, um, and decide whether or not you do want it activated. So this is loaded, but not activated. So let's say I did want Adobe Caslon Pro Regular. I'm going to turn that on by clicking in the little uh, it looks like a pill shape. If I click on it, it'll turn green and the little white circle will move to the right. That means that font is ready to use in the software. Now, we will not have Caslon Pro semi-bold or bold. We will only have regular. So let's go into InDesign and let's see um, what we can come up with here. So I'm going to open a new letter size document. That's 8.5 by 11. And I'm just going to type the word test in, so I'm using the type tool, put a text box in there, and I am going to increase the size of this type because it's too small for me to see. So I can hold down shift and command and if I uh, am on the uh, selection tool, click and drag after I hold down shift and command and keep shift and command held down, I click and I drag and that will get really large. Now if I double click on the corner node, it will automatically take the bounding box and make it the size of that text, but I'm going to keep it a little bit larger for now. 
uh, if I do a triple click in there, I can grab the word. Now let's see if Caslon Pro is loaded. Now this is an open, an open type font. So there we have Caslon Pro and uh, it has an O, so that is good. Uh, let's see, this was Adobe Caslon Pro, okay. And um, go back here for just a second. And we're looking in the C's for Caslon. Just had it, sorry. Uh, here we go, Adobe Caslon Pro. Oh my goodness, I don't know why things are just wanting to move around here. Uh, but it did load. Uh, it has loaded regular italic, semi-bold, and so on. So it has a few of them loaded. Now, just to make sure that I'm going to see what kind of fonts are loaded, because I want to see if I can load something that we don't have on here. Um, do we have Bodoni? Yes. Do we have Palatino? Let's find. Well, Palatino's loaded. Boy, we got a lot of great stuff loaded. Um, I'm going to try to find something that's not loaded or activated, rather. So let's say Berkeley. Is Berkeley loaded? Just want to test it because I want to take something I know is not loaded and make sure it's not um, got it already on there. Okay, so we don't see Berkeley on here. So let's load or activate Berkeley, and we're going to activate. Usually, I activate the entire family because I want to have the bolds and the italics and be able to use the entire um, set within that family. Oops, that's Bernard. So we have, um, oh, I'm getting Burling. I just want a Berkeley. There we go. So these are now activated. Now let's take a look at InDesign and see if Berkeley is actually available to use. It should be um, Berkeley. There we go. ITC Berkeley. Yeah, sometimes you got to look for the uh, Adobe, the word Adobe or ITC. Those are the foundry that creates that particular font set. And here we have Berkeley book, bold, bold italic, and so on. So that is that is working. All right, so we just learned how to take fonts from our resources section of either the typography class or electronic layout class, download them, expand them into a folder, excuse me, uh, we threw away the zip file, we have the folder here. We created three font sets, a display font, a sans serif, and a serif font. And then we separately uploaded these and then moved them into each of these folders. And we can activate the fonts as we need to. We don't want to activate them all at once, it might crash the computer, but we can kind of only activate those fonts which we are using for the current project. Thank you and I hope this video was helpful.